All right. Three, two. What's going on, everybody? It's me, Asad Hashmali, back again with another episode of Behind the Grind. And today we have a very, very special guest with us. Um, I have personally been keeping up with what she's been doing, uh, all the cool, innovative things that actually happen in Pakistan. Somehow or the other, she's played a very important role in that. Uh, and without much further ado, Sana Khalid. Sana, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. So I have been, I'm not lying when I say this, I've actually been keeping tabs with everything that you've done, what you've influenced, um, ND2C, Hive, Minerva, and now Eye to Eye. And I think that I wanted to learn this firsthand from you that how have you, number one, managed so many things all at the same time? How do you follow your gut? Uh, but most importantly, how are you constantly building and pushing everything you do further and further, right? Um, so thank you for taking out the time to come on. Again, thanks for having me and that's... I mean, it's a lot of pressure <laughs> with that kind of introduction. I'm going to try and sort of. So, so let's let's start off easy yeah. a little bit. So, um, when I was uh, going through your LinkedIn, I saw that you went to Lums for a little bit, but then you moved over to Dubai and you did um, accountancy. Yeah. And now you kind of have you're, you're synonymous with personal branding and with with talent development or with yeah. leadership in some capacity, and now with business acceleration. Yeah. Like, take me through this journey. <laughs> in a quick few minutes like from accounting to to people yeah. how'd that happen it's been a ride for sure uh you know the kind of roller coaster ride ek minute aap kehte, oh wow like this is amazing and mm-hmm. then the next minute you're like okay, abhi ulta, okay what if i fall down it's been i think it's been a lot of curiosity um i went to lums because i mean Lums was like a backup plan for me. I always wanted to do chartered accountancy because somebody at school said I couldn't do it. And I was like, okay, I have to do this. So, yeah. um, but I went to Lums. But throughout my one and a half year at Lums, I was actually trying to somehow move out of Pakistan because at that Pakistan was ACA. Tha nahi. Dubai was the closest place where that was available. ACA or ACCA? ACA was okay. ACA, ACA nahi tha and I okay. wanted to do ACA. Take it. So one and a half years into Lums, I finally got the opportunity, got an article ship in Dubai. I moved to Dubai uh, and got into audit. Okay. And where did um, you start off from? Your article ship, that was at KPMG? No, no. It was uh, Sajad Heather, which is okay. like, they're somehow related to Siddharth Heather, but mm-hmm. different. Um, different brother. <laughs> some, somewhat, yes. Uh-huh. Um, so I worked there for three years and then I took a sabbatical. Because okay. I was like, it's getting really tough and difficult to manage exams and study because audit bot is a very tough field in terms yeah. of timings. Okay. Um, even though I had a blast, which is contrary to what most people say about audit, yeah. but I loved it. But I think that's where I learned like the granular details of how businesses operate and the numbers and all of that. And then I moved to Pakistan and I, it was a one year sabbatical basically but mm-hmm. like two weeks into my time here I got bored and Minerva came into being okay out of boredom um, and then Minerva has significantly evolved since I started mm-hmm. but it was I mean I always say my career has just been a more of my playground where I just have fun with it and yeah I mean that. you know I'm just going somewhere or somebody talking to somebody and they're like you know this is and I'm like oh wow this is interesting let's try it so Minerva was a lot of experiment like initially though I would do something and be very like this is what we're gonna do and then two months later I'll be like hmm, this sounds hmm. more interesting so I did a lot of experimentation with to the point we even hosted dholkis at Minerva right really <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like personal branding plus matrimony so combined. Personal branding, I didn't know what I'm doing at that time. Because I was just doing a lot of disconnected things, mm-hmm. which did not make sense. Like when I look at it now from like an aerial view, a lot of it makes sense. But at that time, it was nothing in my life, in my career in particular, was planned. Um, so it wasn't strategic So Minerva was a lot of experimentation. I think it was five years or four years into Minerva that I started to realize that what I was really doing was helping people with their careers. Mm-hmm. But okay. I was somehow 
helping people with their personal brands. So yeah. Then one or two years later, I learned of the word term personal branding, and I was like, wow, this is exactly what I do. Like mm-hmm. I never thought it was personal branding. So it became about personal branding and leadership, and so all of that combined, and mm-hmm. people became like the common theme yeah. in all the experiments that I was doing at Minerva. So was did you have some entrepreneurial bug in you growing up, or was it just by chance? I mean, as much as I can recall, I, I mean, I, I, my dad has had his own business, so mm-hmm. maybe it was a little bit of that. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it was ever thoughtfully done. Kini, I have to do you know, ye karna hai. Like, you know, I was, I, I got into chartered accountancy because I thought, you know, that's the career I wanted. Like, I'll mm-hmm. become an accountant, and accountants ke badi, matlab, us waqt respect bhi tha, aur paise yeah. bhi bade milte hain. Like, all of that. Uh-huh. So I don't think it was ever planned. It just accident. I think everything in my career was curiosity and a lot of accidents. So yeah. And miraculously, somehow things worked out. <laughs> it all fell in, in line. Yeah, it fell in place. So, so what is Minerva today? Right, like we've said, personal branding, but just some yeah. context to what does Minerva do? So today we call it a people excellence lab. People excellence lab. Yeah. Okay. And the reason why we chose the word lab was because of the fact that we just do a lot of experiments with what we are doing, with the mm-hmm. kind of approaches we have to do, doing different things. Mm-hmm. Um, and so within the People Excellence Lab, like our North Star is the number of people who are in thriving careers and how many people we've actually helped thrive in their careers or be happy where they are in terms of their careers. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we do a ton of different things. So we have leadership development, personal branding, recruitment. So we work a lot um, on tech and design related placements within Pakistan mm-hmm. and outside of Pakistan. Mm-hmm. Um, then we have other programs, which are career readiness related. Hai. Yeah, there's a program which, uh, called She Returns, which is basically helping women who get are on a career break yeah. get back to work after a break. So it's technically just a lot of different things. And up recently, we've also in the past two, three years started looking into um, sort of mapping the workforce and the workspace landscape in Pakistan in terms of what is really happening, like Mm -hmm. what are the conversations? Because we realized every time we wanted to design a program or do something in this space, the only references we had were... Out from outside outside of Pakistan, yeah. right? So like there weren't any local case studies. So now we're also sort of working on that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, in a nutshell, we're basically just people who help thrive in their careers mm-hmm. and help them sort of do better. So so these different programs that you have going on are they um, cohort based or do they just run independently like all year round when people come in? How does it work? It's a mix. Okay. Personal branding so far has been very one-on-one. Okay. So it's as and when. It's a, it's client-based. Mm-hmm. Um, we work mostly with founders, CEOs, you know, people who've probably reached the peak of their careers and are now thinking, like, what's next? What's next, yeah. Um, so that's very one-on-one. She Returns so far has been more cohort-based. Okay. Um, career guidance has been a combination of groups, mm-hmm. uh, cohort based as well as one on one. None of the programs technically run throughout the year, more batches, but some one on ones, which is like on a rolling mm-hmm. basis. Okay. So, you, so that's also helping you to kind of like divide may, or maybe chalk out seasons throughout the year. On yeah. The, okay. All right. Fair. Yeah. So, so compared to the start of Minerva, yeah. when it was <laughs> event management. <laughs> <laughs> for the lack of a better word, yeah. to now becoming this this people excellence lab. Hmm. What do you feel were some challenges that you saw earlier on that still continue to exist today? And that's purely based on the the, the, the idea behind this question is just to understand the nature of the business, not necessarily that, hmm. you know, you haven't built a system or you haven't like figured out how to yeah. oil this machine. I think, I mean, the num- every time somebody asks me about challenges, I realize that I've never focus too much on like what like for me it's always a design problem like how do we do this rather than oh yeah so i think it's always like i have to force myself to think of challenges but i think probably in the leadership development talent development space i think the biggest challenge is people really understand the need for it Mm -hmm. till it's too late right so 
you'll think about improving yourself when you you've already spent 6 months looking for a job and now you've hit rock bottom you you're like oh now what do i do hmm. right and i think it's been a challenge monetization has always been a challenge okay um because people don't see the value behind because, it because yeah i mean hum bahut pehle माइक्रोसॉफ्ट वर्ड और ये वाली सारी वर्कशॉप्स कराते थे लाइक टेन ईयर्स बट वो था भी टाइम राइट उस वक्त तो बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट आई एक्चुअली स्टिल थिंक लाइक टूल्स अब वो रिप्लेस हो गए हैं टूल्स बट दोज टूल्स आर स्टिल इम्पोर्टेंट टू लर्न बट उस वक्त भी यही था कि आप किसी से भी पूछते थे हर किसी के रेज्यूमे पे होता था कि वर्ड और एक्सेल और पावर पॉइंट आता है बट टेक्निकली किसी को आता नहीं था तो वी ट्राई एंड सेल इट सेल दोज वर्कशॉप एंड इट वॉज ऑलवेज अ चैलेंज टिल वी सेट ओके डोंट पे अस लेट्स डू अर test hmm. right do this for us if you are able to complete the test within this amount of time we'll give you the training for free but if you fail then you can pay us and decide whether you want to take the training or not hmm. so we had to be very creative with how we sold stuff to people mm mm-hmm. similarly even in the corporate sector corporate sector mein humne trainings karna bahut kam kar di because it was more like you know mere paas lakh rupaye ka budget hai लाख रुपए में बस आप ट्रेनिंग करा दे मुझे बजट स्पेंड करना है सो इट वाज लाइक अ वैल्यू कॉन्फ्लिक्ट आल्सो टू सम एक्सटेंड कि यू नो लाख रुपए में मैं आपको ट्रेनिंग लीडरशिप की ट्रेनिंग करा दें एक दिन की एंड आई वाज लाइक व्हाट व्हाट इज द आउटकम दैट यू वांट फ्रॉम अ वन डे ट्रेनिंग ऑन लीडरशिप लाइक कि नहीं हमारी यू नो वुमेन आर नॉट कमिंग टू टू लीडरशिप रोल्स एंड आई वाज लाइक हाउ डू यू चेंज दैट इन अ डे इट्स नॉट अ डेज जॉब सो देयर वाज आई थिंक दोस वर सम चैलेंजेस जो अभी भी टू सम एक्सटेंड हैं वी probably the only thing that has changed and made it easier for us is that we've sort of designed our products in a way that uh, i mean now make more sense like people are more aware generally as well people are more introspective compared to tab ke ek linear mm-hmm. route hota tha to aapko pata tha ki nahi bas ye 10 steps karne now people are more experimental mm-hmm. um so but that still remains a challenge in terms of selling something to people i think that would be it and i think dusra is more of a personal challenge which is like just want to do too many things and <laughs> so, <laughs> can't yeah. stick to one but do you have anyone with you in this like who can operate this while you're busy yeah okay. yeah so the first four or five years the focus was never like i said it was just mm-hmm. me having fun yeah the past four ish years have been more of me now focusing on building teams and processes Sorry. in place so that i am not a bottleneck because i had started becoming a bottleneck okay. in whatever we wanted to do and um so yeah now there's okay. a team in place and we sort of continue to build that as we grow okay so so what do you feel like because now you also have this you've always had that exposure towards startup land in pakistan right yeah. and you also um i've always heard your name from a number of people that run very large organizations and very small organizations as well hmm. and something that when i hear about minerva or even just the idea behind this conversation was just to understand people capabilities yeah and all organizations have a culture problem right yeah. i'm just going to say problem because <laughs> i can't think of anything else but there are challenges around yeah. uh, associating with the set culture and uh, there's also uh, challenges around facilitating growth no yeah. matter how big or small the organization is yeah right and what do you, so i want to know a little bit about what do you feel like um these small businesses can actually do uh in your opinion to to firstly establish some kind of culture and then also have growth opportunities within the organization mm-hmm. i think this is such an important topic we could probably have like an entire podcast let's, on it let's do it <laughs> let's do it this is it the time is now <laughs> but but very briefly i think one we have to think of organizations like I mean an organization is nothing outside of the people that work within it. Yeah. Right? So technically what you're saying is how do we make sure that people share the same sort of common values and ways of doing things. So when we think about culture and this is a question because we are in recruitment we ask a lot of companies ki acha hame agar aapko aisa banda chahiye what kind of culture fit what would be a culture fit and it's a standard sentence right like you know driven driven ho or you know flexible culture hai and you know we you know i mean there's just those three cliched things jo ab har koi kehta hai because they're the cool thing to say hmm. flexible work hours work from home like they think that is culture but i think the first thing is to just define culture right mm-hmm. which is it's technically just a shared set of values and ways of doing things 
Yeah. Right. So it's really not about working from home. It's the rationale behind why are you working from home? Yeah. Why is it remote? How do you make decisions? Um, what is rewarded? Yeah. What is penalized? Yeah. Um, and so in smaller organization, usually culture is a direct reflection of the founder. I mean, it's as simple as that. The founder ki values, mm-hmm. um, unka ka tarika, that's culture. Mm-hmm. And I think the first step to building any kind of whatever culture you want to build is to be very conscious about it, one. Two, hiring for culture is extremely important and like th- that it, 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 different debate hai ke agar ap, you know if you're hiring for culture does that mean no diversity because then you're hiring yeah. the same kind of people like that's a separate debate altogether but or compromising on talent then yeah someone could be like really qualified and an a player but just not a culture sure. fit bilkul. Yeah. yeah i mean so these are all important questions right mm-hmm. but i think there's a Again, it boils down to first being very conscious, like these are the five values. Mm -hmm. This is how I want to operate. And no one culture is the right culture. Like I think one of the things my friends sort of, you know, mazaak uraate hain is ki sana se aap koi bhi sawal karenge na to start hoga, it depends. And I'm like, because (laughs) when it comes to people, everything is super nuanced, right? When it comes to organizations, everything is super nuanced. Yeah. You and I might have the same size of team. We might be doing the same kind of business. Yeah. But our cultures can be very different. And it mm-hmm. doesn't mean that your culture is better or mine is better. It just means they're different. Mm-hmm. We have a different way of operating. We have a different way of work. Mm-hmm. But I mean, if you were talking about particularly growth, for example. Um, I mean, obviously, there are certain things in culture which are standard. Like, you know, communication and respect and like those things. Which I think for any team to really thrive wo basic requirements hai, ki, yeah. you know they have the respect from their mm-hmm, teams mm-hmm. and you know they feel respected and all of that mm-hmm. but i think the second most important thing if you want to build a culture of growth particularly mm-hmm. is to build a safe space so where people feel safe enough to ask you questions to make mistakes um if you are penalizing somebody and I've seen this in organizations where, you know, they're like, why don't you take initiative? They don't take initiative because you bloody penalize them the last time they tried something new, right? And you're like, this is not what I told you to do. Mm-hmm. So, yes, sometimes. And again, like I said, it's very nuanced because sometimes the stakes are really high. So how it's, a, it, I mean, as a leader, there's a very, you have to find the balance between enabling mm-hmm. and empowering people. Mm-hmm. but also making sure that you know the risks are calculated yeah um it's also i think another important thing in terms of growth is how vulnerable a leader themselves mm-hmm. is do you accept your own mistakes so if you don't accept your mistakes Nobody then the chances them. are that people think there's something wrong with accepting mistakes and yeah. you know if you and I've seen, unfortunately, some people, some leaders would talk about, you know, yaar, tumne aise kar diya, to ab dekho ye kya hua. Yeah. It's also the language you use, right? Yeah, yeah. So, okay, we made a mistake, you know, think it's, there's nothing wrong with acknowledging a mistake and giving that feedback. Yeah. It's more also the language that you use. Are you saying, tumne galti kar di, or are you saying, yaar, we messed up? Yeah. Let's fix it. What mm-hmm. do you need? What can I do to help you? Yeah. So I think, in particularly smaller organizations, a lot is driven by the founder's own values. Mm-hmm. Being aware of your values is extremely important. And then building processes that work for you and hiring people that fit into those processes, right? Um, so for some organizations, the work from home situation might be great. Yeah. For some, it might not be. And I don't think there's anything wrong with either. It's just two different cultures. It's two different ways of doing work. Mm-hmm. If one thing works for an organization, great. I mean, that's their way of doing things. So I think thinking of culture as a conscious effort and also thinking of it as an evolving thing. Yeah. So as the organization grows, scaling culture is very, very difficult, yeah. right? Because then you hire, and that's where hiring the right fit comes in so if you notice the larger the organization gets then there's 
माइक्रो कल्चर विद इन दर्गनाइजेशन सो फाइनेंस डिपार्टमेंट का एक अपना कल्चर होगा मार्केटिंग का अपना होगा यू नो एवरीबडी सो इट ऑल बॉयज डाउन टू हुज लीडिंग दैट डिपार्टमेंट और so I think just being very conscious particularly larger organizations के अपने challenges हैं और उनको वो कैसे deal करेंगे but with smaller organization I think it just starts with being very very conscious and also making sure that your what you're saying is reflected in your policies yeah in how you work mm-hmm. in how you make decisions it's not just about saying you know we have an inclusive culture we are very flexible yeah. you know we're very empathetic but then how does that reflect in your policies mm-hmm. Yeah. But I also feel like it's a matter of I I want to know a little bit about actually let me rephrase this because I lost my words there but you had to do a lot of this yourself right yeah. like you've been working independently for a while yeah um so I think that there's a big lesson in this as well because you can't just be like you know preaching you also have to practice what you preach to yeah um but it's very important for especially like even myself when when you're saying all of this i'm also just reflecting and asking myself that now that we've become a bigger organization or bigger than we're, bigger than what we were even last year or two months ago or six months ago and with things moving constantly this is need to I, i'm recognizing this is need to over communicate number one but number two um just biting the bullet on my own schedule and accepting the fact that I will be working late at night because I need to spend that time with the team and make sure that they are understanding the thought process they are understanding um you know what would be the so called right way of doing things yeah. rather than them fumbling and then it you know being too late yeah but how do you tackle the idea of then ensuring speed and efficiency because mm-hmm. sometimes when you look at competitive cultures a competitive work environments uh like a bank um they just care about getting the job done really fast and you know people climbing over each other to to set themselves apart that's how it's been structured yeah right but then on the other hand you have like you know startups coming out from yc that keep talking about like people at the core of it culture 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 spend that time in recruiting the bench the initial bench of people yeah but they also scale and they're doing it 10 times faster than any of these big banks have as well yeah so how do you manage that like how do you ensure that culture or how how do you communicate this to people that culture does not mean you compromise on speed and efficiency and high quality work culture yeah. in, in, instead actually means that you're able to drive it in a newer way yeah i think the first question is do people want to know that i mean that's one so you will have when to we, change basically yeah okay. i mean are they comfortable with that conversation hmm. a very interesting sort of thought way of thinking about it is a lot of people want flat hierarchies mm-hmm. but they also want vertical growth yeah and they want titles right now that's a cultural value conflict right mm-hmm. so sometimes i mean again it's a matter of is this wrong or right i mean it's more of that question right mm-hmm. is are are banks doing it wrong Mm-hmm. and are startups doing it right or are they just two different ways of doing things right right um and you'll actually come across people who value titles more than they value autonomy and they value speed and efficiency and all of those things mm-hmm. now we might have a bias against that kind of culture because they do that doesn't align with our values we want speed and agility mm-hmm. and all of those things but for some people maybe that's what they value mm-hmm. right I think these are all it all boils down to again understanding that culture for any organization also doesn't always remain the same. So like you said it's meant to evolve. Yeah. And it evolves with size, it evolves with if you as a leader evolve, you're going to mm-hmm. change how you think yeah. and how you do things. Mhm. And usme phir obviously kai jafa friction bhi aati hai because you know you're in your head now you want to do things differently but there's a certain culture that you developed initially which still exists mm-hmm. and so to change that changing culture is always very very difficult right so mm-hmm. for a lot of times when we say you know why can't organizations like big banks why can't they do things faster or that it can happen mm-hmm. but it's going to be a very uncomfortable process mm-hmm. it might even mean sort of getting rid of the entire team and bringing an entirely different kind of team yeah. because changing culture is more difficult than building the right culture from the very beginning it's super super difficult to change culture mm-hmm. right um 
but again coming down to i don't know if i i can name the organization but i mean even within the organization so one organization actually tried to fix the problem okay so they created a department um and they said let's try and do things differently in this department mm-hmm. but now the problem is ki wo department to ek bilkul different culture ke sath chal raha hai but the rest of the organization is humongous mm. different and it's going to take ages for that to seep in yeah so i mean sometimes it i mean it it ha- it will be a bloodbath mm-hmm. <laughs> in yeah. my opinion if you try and change a bank the way a bank changed and then there's also external factors right yeah. so there's regulations and there's all of those things which sometimes mean ke acha 10 logon ke signature required hai by law for example to phir aap kya karenge but so this i was along the same line so that's an external factor yeah. that dictates culture work yeah. style but i feel like now more than ever what we're all seeing is and maybe my judgment is coming because i'm seeing this for the first time right like where the economy is at where the world is at this is all very new to me i don't have many personal experiences from cases prior but even this plays a role on now how your work environment is dictated i can see that like in my own friend circle i can see that within their own organization they feel there's some kind of resistance that's been created because of tension in external factors hmm. um and securing that i, I don't necessarily want to go into that because that's also a, <laughs> that's that's also a very deep hole but trying to trying to preserve what you have going for you hmm. and using that external resistance as a as a as a force to keep the good alive and keep the positivity alive and still grow beyond that i think mm. is very important yeah yeah i mean again you see it depends yeah. um i get what your friend say now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um but but i truly think that um whenever whenever we talk about culture there's obviously a lot of different things at play at the end of the day if you're trying to build a culture that doesn't support your business yeah for example there's going to be a problem right if you're trying to build a culture which doesn't align with your own core values simply because so let's suppose agar as a leader in my organization and i know this this might not be a very popular opinion and mm-hmm. i don't talk about it too often because i think i also like the energy to debate about it too much but but i think it's important um So if for example as a leader for a smaller organization if I am the kind of person who works better in person mm-hmm. but I am forced to go into a completely remote situation and that's part of culture right because that's you're basically saying this is how we will operate yeah without actually putting in place the processes and systems and the communication which allows me to work efficient as efficiently as i was working while we were working from an office space things will collapse yeah so i think it's more about i mean a lot of times i i think even when you're talking about hiring new resources i feel like they will lose out on so much learning for example because when we were sitting in the office i could learn from you the way that you talk to a customer the way that yeah. you speak to other people it was just easier right yeah, yeah, yeah. and i'm not saying that matlab minerva has been remote most of our uh, you know entire mm-hmm. being but i think it's more about do you have the we will find a way to do things better online yeah most organizations have not found that way yeah, yet yeah. and which is why there's that friction mm-hmm. in terms of people want remote jobs they want flexibility all of that but we don't have the processes yet we don't have we our teams aren't enabled so if your team isn't enabled to be able to do their work from home and they have to rely on you to make a certain decision or whatever and then you know so i mean mm-hmm. discipline it's, also it's absolutely yeah, yeah. so i th- i'm not saying i think remote is fine i think hybrid is fine i mm-hmm. think on site is fine mm-hmm. i think it all depends on what culture you're building and whether your policies your um systems your tools that you're using the training and the communication styles whether they align with that hmm. um entirely right right so i think 
we'll get there yeah i don't think most organizations have gotten there and i think it becomes even more difficult for smaller organizations who are still trying to figure things out right mm-hmm. so ek organization hai uska ek standard process hai usme roz wohi 10 processes ko repeat karna hai ek product hai wohi bechna hai you know it's yeah. a standard process very difficult to do from anywhere yeah. right yeah. but ek aur organization and they're building new products and they're testing new things and they need to be in constant communication and things will change you know like this mm-hmm. in that situation maybe remote might not work for them so i think again it boils down to culture matlab har cheez karne ke different tarike ho sakte hain it doesn't mean one is right or the other is wrong it's just what works for you within that organization mm-hmm. at that point at that scale and at, for you as a leader particularly like i said kyunki choti organization mein ek bande ke upar bahut sari cheeze dependent hoti hain larger organizations mein zyada than hmm. there is other nuances right right Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna s- step aside from this a little bit, um, and also stay in the same vein around like business success because it's all falling in line with that. Like you know hmm. whether you go remote, how your processes are in place, yeah. Um, design, hmm. in your opinion, how important is design for business success? Because you said something very interesting earlier on in this conversation that if something's not working out, for me it's a design problem. Yeah. Yeah. So it is. Um I I think for most of us design has always been a very aesthetic thing. Yeah. And I think that still is true. Design has an aesthetic appeal to it. Mhm. But again, when I think of design, I think of how does something work? Right? And so when we talk about systems and processes, we say that we're designing systems and we're designing processes. So I personally feel every problem can potentially be a design problem. Uh and my designer friends always say ki you know hum sadiyon se yehi kar rahe the ya bas ek word aa gaya hai to aise design, design, design thinking wale jo the aa gaya hai ye hum sadiyon se yehi kar rahe the har koi aise hi karta hai that it's basically a problem solving framework technically yeah. right so you do your research and then you ideate and then you prototype i mean it's that's how things have been but i think for from a business perspective and i and i mean there's lots of studies now and a lot of data around how design is important mm-hmm. but i think in a very simple sort of way design is exactly how things work yeah so from a business perspective i would say if you can remove friction like basically the purpose of design is to remove friction so we mm-hmm. no, now talk a lot about people and people centricity yeah but and that's a design problem because how do i remove friction for my can- client for example mm-hmm. so that they can get whatever they need from me faster asani se yeah. without any friction people centricity also means that how can my employees do their job better how can i design their job their environment their role better so that they can thrive mm-hmm. there how can their job be easier for them that's a design problem right um so i mean if you look at design from that angle i think everything you do in a business every problem you solve is a design problem technically yeah um and then aesthetically bhi agar aap dekhein to of course how you position if you think you know positioning if you think of positioning as a design problem how do i position my yeah. organization in a way so that people are willing to pay more money mm-hmm. for example mm-hmm. it's i mean if you think about the design thinking framework then it's a design problem yeah So if I don't know if if that was your question, but no, that is basically. But so I continue. Yeah. No, I mean I I just think from from that perspective, if you stop thinking of design just from an aesthetic perspective and start thinking of how do things work, mm-hmm. then of course I mean when you wake up in the morning and I don't know if but but मेरे किचन में अगर कॉफी मशीन है तो उसके साथ ही अगर मैंने कॉफी भी रखनी है और चीनी भी रखनी है और पानी भी रखना है तो then yeah. that's I've designed it that way, right? Yeah. So. how smoothly things work in an organization how friction less things are mm-hmm. is how well you've designed the system or the process but do you feel like now this has become a bit over complicated the the use of design in business i don't mean like it's a i i, I don't mean to say that it's a bad thought process or it's a bad framework hmm. i love it personally but i yeah. also feel like at times that if you try bring in a design designer into the mix yeah it ends up going straight back to the drawing board because it's not like every step in the framework has to be given that 
you know like due process and aaram se aapne karna hai it can be rapid as well it's kind of like i often use the the six thinking hats framework i don't know if you've yeah. heard of that but you can like if you know how the framework works and you just quickly like go through all of them and like yeah. yeah okay that's my answer yeah so the same applies with you do you feel like it becomes i agree hmm and i think it's maybe because it's still new so people are going by the book hmm rather than by what they already know or experience and so on mm-hmm. and so forth um but yeah i think i mean it's you're right yeah bahut zyada hyped up or complicated kar diya hai वो जो मैं कह रही थी कि टेक्निकली दैट्स हाउ यू सॉल्व अ प्रॉब्लम पहले हमने उसको फ्रेमवर्क में नहीं डाला बट जब भी यू एनी प्रॉब्लम दैट यू हैव टू सॉल्व टेक्निकली दैट्स हाउ यू डू इट ओके दिस इज द इन्फॉर्मेशन आई हैव अबाउट दिस प्रॉब्लम ओके दीज आर द थ्री वेज आई कैन डू इट ओके लेट मी ट्राई दिस वन ओके दिस डेंट वर्क आई ट्राई अनदर वन टेक्निकली दैट्स डिजाइन थिंकिंग सो वी बिन डूइंग इट ऑल अलॉन्ग बट नाउ बिकॉज देर इज a bookish kind of framework that yeah. we have i think people are just trying to follow it yeah. word by word and and that the purists are trying to ensure it's a label yeah. at every single point in time uh but so so is this what was the the thought process behind nd2c like is this what you were trying to to advocate for or to build awareness around so initially no actually okay. um when we started and you started and you see starting it think i was we were doing these this series of workshops on unconventional um careers okay right and us work design was not considered a career that would sort of pay you well right so for at that point in time it was sort of unconventional it was not the regular engineering and those kind of career options so we were like creative careers wali side pe wanted so we started doing design ki workshops with uh, nida salman was helping me with those workshops so she was executing them and delivering those workshops but when we started delivering those workshops we realized that people just wanted to learn the tool mm-hmm. they didn't want anything to do with design principles or like the aesthetics of things or how things work they just wanted to learn ke acha photoshop sikha de illustrator sikha de but you know they were not interested in the principles behind why Great certain things exists, work yeah. better uh or certain placements work better mm-hmm. and so on and so forth and the more we spoke about it the more we realized that it was just because people thought ke design is all about you know acha ye acha lag raha hai mm-hmm. acha lagna chahiye dekhne mein rather than thinking about okay you know the way that you structure your typography will impact what people look at first or what they read first again how it works rather than just how it looks mm-hmm. um and then we realized ke you know pakistan mein koi us level ki sort of conference design ke around nahi hoti thi where people could actually come and talk about design and mm-hmm. the impact of design and when we started thinking about it that's when we thought okay you know it, if we're really talking about how design works and if we want more people to sort of adapt um design as not just, like i mean as a career but also as a way of doing things and thinking about problems that's how we sort of came to the conclusion that it also has to have a sense of how design works in business okay uh and what is the importance of design in business um and it's interesting because jab humne conversation like jab when we started speaking to people it was very difficult to just explain what we meant by design yeah right and um i think by the end of the third year we were pretty happy that at least okay now people are talking about design and they're talking about design thinking and they're hiring product designers and yeah. ux is a conversation now and all of those mm-hmm. things um so yeah i mean initially ye thought nahi thi mm-hmm. we were just doing a design graphic design workshop yeah but then we realized ke you know there's so much fo- focus on aesthetics and not and you know the tool but mm-hmm. nobody wants to really talk about how it actually works and mm-hmm. why it works okay and so that's how nd2c came to being so before i actually go into the next section of this on that point a question that's coming up is that what is your thoughts on the whole generalist versus specialist argument because now with all of these new fields coming in right and with the importance of design in everything that we do that same designer is expected to make posts for social media and also <laughs> design the app layout and then also figure out what uh, yeah. poster should go up on the wall hmm. as well right whereas each of them are its own specialties hmm. 
talent is somehow required to, to know it all because design is like all encompassing and our business is also kind of like we need designers we don't need engineers we don't need marketers we don't need sales people we just need like designers because <laughs> the designers can do everything and anything yeah no i think that's more of an understanding problem than a generalist versus specialist debate mm mm-hmm. uh i mean smaller organizations may specialist ki hamesha kam jagah hogi Hmm. because it's more expensive there's hmm. a lot to do you can't afford to have a larger team so on hmm. and so hmm. forth in larger organizations it's just it just makes more sense more mechanical so yeah. you know um so i really don't think that what you are in particular talking about so the hmm. generalist versus specialist is a important debate yeah and i've struggled with it all my life because i'm a generalist so it was always a problem of you know how do i explain mm-hmm. what i do how do i sell myself how do i position myself right mm-hmm. and it took a long while for me mm-hmm. to figure out and i still sometimes you know go into that existential crisis where i'm like what do i really do like yeah what is my forte yeah um and for her generalist guy sort of cliche answer you that i am a problem solver <laughs> that's the only way to position yourself also known as designer <laughs> yeah but i think what you are talking about is this is a misunderstanding it is a misunderstanding yeah. and it's also not true for all organizations ha huh. um it's... i also don't mean to put that as a blanket statement yeah. for all organizations i just feel like this is becoming a field now where there is so much depth yeah. and as years progress this we're, we're discovering more and more about it yeah and a lot of it is coming in from the west a lot of it is coming in from silicon yeah. valley and from from other startups yeah. that exist it's a definitional challenge also yeah. i feel like a lot of people are not clear on what it hmm. means and i know this for a fact because we work with a lot of hiring managers who are trying to hire yeah. designers and tech people right mm-hmm. so hame bahut zyada unke sath sort of we have to dig deep into what are you really trying to get done yeah because sometimes the title actually does not reflect what they're actually looking for right and it's a matter of the hiring manager just doesn't know any better right mm. so i think it's more of a definitional understanding challenge to new to some things who don't understand ke in mein difference kya hai mm-hmm. what do we actually need at this point ye nahi pata yeah it's more of that rather than the fact ke ha nahi aise hi hota hai aur aise hona chahiye ya nahi hona chahiye Uh, okay. and i think it's not just design it's generally mm-hmm. like if you talk about product managers for mm-hmm. example a lot of people don't really know ke okay, product manager ka role kya hai so they try and club everything into mm-hmm. it ya engineering manager hai to wo design ko bhi dekhega ya nahi dekhega you know so there's i think it's more of a, an understanding challenge a lot of people just don't know Mm-hmm. what they're looking for simply because ya to unka background usme nahi hai aur ab wo hire kar rahe hain so mm-hmm. i mean one of the things jo immediately sort of puts off a candidate is when they ask ki acha you know who are we going to report to and we're like the ceo and like we don't want to work here because the, they don't understand design so is there a design person who will be leading us okay so obviously aur wo ki galti nahi hai like the ceo wants a design person but they're yeah. like you know they don't know what they're even looking for yeah what is that design person going to do is this are you looking for a ux person are you looking for ui are you looking yeah. for graphic designer visual community aur phir wo hota hai ki wo club ho jata hai ki acha chalo aisa banda dhoondne jo sab kuch kar sakta hai aur agar coding bhi thodi si aati ho to wo bhi dal de mix mein wo bhi dal de i think it's more definitional and understanding same, same, same. Oh, more of an education problem okay sahi hai chalo i'm going to segue a little bit now into um your most recent endeavor yeah i to i hmm. what's up with that not <laughs> not necessarily that but like what is a business accelerator actually first and foremost okay cuz i to i's so, name keeps popping up the deal flow charts always there on linkedin <laughs> and i think it's one of those trail bla- blazing um firms that exist yeah, for this so ecosystem i i to i uh kulsum lakhani started i to i around right. 10 years ago uh and i feel like it was so ahead of the time like because us waqt acceleration so basically acceleration is okay a startup wants to go from point a to point b okay how do we how can we help them get there faster than okay. they would without us okay that's the easiest way of sort of explaining ki acceleration so, yeah. kya hai 
and then of course there's incubator versus accelerator incubator is okay very early stage you're building an idea sort of that and acceleration is now you want to scale and grow and how do you do that hmm. um so i do i is technically an ecosystem builder Okay. Um there are two major domains within I2I. One is the insights lab. Yeah. So like you mentioned the deal flow tracker and mm-hmm. quarterly updates that we so we try and map the startup ecosystem. Mhm. Um because there we do understand that Pakistan mein data for any kind of decision making particularly in the startup ecosystem right. either it doesn't exist and yeah. even if it does exist it's very very fragmented. Right. Uh or it's in a format which is almost not usable. Right. or you won't be able to find it. Right. So that's one of the um core elements at I2I and then the other is um mm-hmm. programs. Mm-hmm. Just my accelerator is one part of it. Okay. Um and like I said accelerator my entire focus is how can we help startups mm-hmm. get from point A to point B faster, scale faster, grow mm-hmm. faster. Um but then there are other things we do within the program section right so which includes um training other incubators and accelerators for example or helping them with their curriculum design and program design and so on and really? so forth really okay yeah so we we do that and i mean then there's fundraise readiness so recently mm-hmm. there was a project um of uh, the world bank which was focused on how do we move the needle on helping more women close deals, deals in pakistan uh so it was focused very specifically on fundraise readiness where a lot of times investors feel like they come across a startup founder or a startup which is investable mm-hmm. but they're not investor ready okay so business model samajh mein aa raha hai sab kuch samajh mein aa raha hai but maybe data room sahi nahi hai cap table shayad bahut zyada messy hai like mm-hmm. they can be all of those different things where mm-hmm. which come under ya pitch sahi nahi kar pa rahe ya numbers sahi nahi pata ya you know those kind of things yeah, they're yeah. not just investor ready even though the business might be investable yeah Um so there's a combination of different programs that we run. Okay so uh, with with the accelerator how does it look like because when you say that you know you help them go from point A to point B I'm guessing that they're already at a revenue stage and now they have to scale that up. Yeah. Right? So there is a lot of different um I mean if you speak to different people acceleration can be defined in different ways and it just depends on her accelerator ka koi criteria hoga like this is where we think we can support a startup or this stage where we can support the startup mm-hmm. best um and sometimes that does mean ke how ke you know there is a certain criteria ke itna revenue ho to fir uske baad we'll be able to help them scale so on and so forth mm-hmm. but acceleration in its very very simplest form is just point a to point b but faster mm-hmm. right so it could mean okay you have a very solid kind of prototype you've seen some traction maybe you're pre revenue but how do we get you to mm-hmm. become um you know get your first 100 mm-hmm. clients but faster but like you said you said like the other side of the programs is the curriculum design for other incubators or yeah. accelerators so then what is happening in this curriculum like like walk me through that like if sure. i was a start if i was if i was bringing in my business into yeah. the accelerator then what would i experience yeah okay so one um there was an accelerator model which was a travel accelerator model that i2i was running pre covid now we're sort of revamping how the accelerator is going to be run and we'll be launching it soon um based on how so many things have changed within the startup ecosystem mm-hmm. based on what we've learned from all these years mm-hmm. of running i2i and the programs and from speaking to founders and how things are evolving at a global level also and regionally also mm-hmm. so what we're doing now is the accelerator one thing that we very clearly now understand is that regardless even if you bring 10 startups together and have like a criteria which sort of glues those startup together a common ground between those startups her startup ki need bahut different ho her mm-hmm. founder ki need bahut different ho right mm-hmm. um so what we're doing with the and this is something we did with vrays also the project which, are, which was for women um mm-hmm. fundraise readiness is that it's more coaching based rather than okay here are 10 workshops Okay. And we'll teach you, you know, how to, you know, business modeling and like right. business development and um how to make a pitch deck and all of that. Right, right. So now the accelerator that we're putting together is a combination of coaching, mhm, of hands-on support. So we're looking more at 
how can we help you meet your first 10 clients? Or how, if you have a prototype, can we find you, you know, your first 100 test people who can test your product? Mm -hmm. um, or how can we, if, if your focus is on fundraising, then how can we map and sort of connect you to the right investors? So for each startup, the journey would actually be very, very unique and different based on what they're really looking for. Okay. So would you, when you say that okay, curriculum we are designing for design kar rahe hai, but then hum apna, so what's different? Hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, if you think about a business, there are certain common themes that you don't need to know if you want to run a business. Run karna rahe hai, yeah. right? It's more about the execution, mm -hmm. which differentiates different programs. Mm -hmm. It's more about what problem you are solving. Mm -hmm. And I think where I2I really stands out is the community which the startups get access to, which opens a lot of doors, whether it's from a client perspective or a partnerships perspective or a visibility perspective or an investment perspective. Yeah. So the accelerator that we're now putting together is very, very community driven. Okay. Very focused on less on training and more on actually helping move the business forward. Right. And you help also set those goals up then? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, that because comes as part of coaching also, right? Yeah, because that's what I was wondering. Like, if there's the coaching, but then that community and network, the network is only as good as my yeah. use of that network Absolutely. as well. If I'm not leveraging it, then... Absolutely. Huh. So, of course, there has to be a roadmap. Like I said, you have to know what your point A and point B point, is. Okay. Where, are you, where are you today? Where do you want to be? Mm -hmm. And can I help you get there faster? Right. If I can, then, of course, it makes sense for you to be part of the accelerator. If I okay. can't then that's another question. Okay. But to be clear on those two mm -hmm. points is important. See. So two questions now. Do you feel like it would take, like it's easy for an accelerator to now pop up and do its thing? Or do you feel like what Kulsum brought to the table was also like, it was years in the work to get to this point. Mm -hmm. And that's when the true value comes out. Hmm. It's a difficult question because I think there is scope for more than one player. Right. Right. So I I don't feel like just us would even be enough mm -hmm. to do what is needed for the ecosystem to grow. Right. Um, but is it easy for just anybody to come and open up uh, an accelerator? Sure. Mm -hmm. But I think as more and more options pop up mm -hmm. and the ecosystem becomes mature and founders become mature, they're also more mindful of what they choose. Right. Right. So one thing we know for sure is you can start an accelerator today, but for, and you run a business, I run a business. We both know how important time is for us. Yeah. I don't want to be part of a startup accelerator or an incubator where I would be wasting my time. Hmm. So I would actually look at, and again, another accelerator might be better at what you want help mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. So I think, yes, people can open up accelerators, but I think accelerator ki monetization is a, is, challenge, not, yeah. is a challenge, right? So if you want to charge people for something, then you really have to be providing value. Right. And a lot of that value does come from community. Hmm. And building that community is not easy. And I think Kulsum and I2 has, has, you know, they've done a great job and putting, yeah. build, sort of bringing people together mm -hmm. um, from an ecosystem perspective, right? So a lot of times you'd think, and I say this all the time, a lot of people saying, you know, competitor, who is your I'm like, we think like an ecosystem builder. Yeah. We don't think like us versus them. Yeah. And if you want to for you, that's like, you're part of the community. Yeah, well. I think, I would want to leverage what they have yeah. and offer what I have mm -hmm. and say, if we really want the ecosystem to grow, because we all want a larger pie, like yeah. a piece of a larger pie, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if you want the ecosystem to genuinely grow, mm -hmm. then we should actually stop working in silos and working, be working together because there's something that each of us does better. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So do you feel like your perspectives changed on the startup ecosystem after joining I2I? Uh, my perspective on the startup ecosystem, I don't think it has changed. I think it's more of, it's definitely been a learning experience for me because I had been 
around the startup ecosystem mm-hmm. and it was more of like okay i had an aerial view but now i have to sort of like navigate the streets and you know all of that mm-hmm. it's more of that i think something probably that i always knew but has been a realization is not a perspective on the startup ecosystem but i think it's a general sort of thought that inherently as people in the startup ecosystem were either not designed or wired to or allowed to be pessimistic about anything right because from the very nature of it we're saying we're solving a problem yeah we're experimenting and mm. we know that there is a huge possibility we'll fail yeah so i think that's just been more of a realization rather than a change of perspective mm-hmm. so to speak so like say no to bad vibes <laughs> is, <laughs> absolutely is the motto. so yeah. <laughs> yeah. and and i asked this question because like you know now um with this news of jugnu and with meds in more and last year airlift it, it's like i feel like um there is this there is a glooms day kind of picture that's being painted of this tech ecosystem and mm. of startup land in pakistan and mm. i say startup land because there are many small businesses out there that say there are startups and more power to them i think the fact that people are designed to be entrepreneurs is amazing mm. um but what's your thought on that now because on one side the perspective is that you know uh, no bad vibes allowed yeah um uh, and you know long game for pakistan yeah. and things are going to be a okay if we all yeah. pers- persevere and if we cherish the moment and if we work together and if we grow this hmm. community larger and farther and stronger on the other side you hearing business is shut down hmm. and you can't help but think that well oh shit yeah <laughs> what's going to happen now yeah so a lot of thoughts were crossing my mind when you were talking about it um the first one was when you said you know a lot of people are now becoming entrepreneurs and kudos to them and all of that i feel like we glamorized entrepreneurship a lot 100% right 100% yeah um it's not for everybody i think that should be very very clear yeah. it's not for everybody it depends significantly on your risk appetite yeah. on your um you know i mean there's too many factors so 100% I'm not going into details but that's that was my first thought that came to my mind the second was I think all these the news about airlift jab airlift also shut down and again I'm not going to comment on the competence of the team or whatever jo ke bahut sari conversations abhi bhi meds and more ki khabar aaye hue ek din nahi hua tha and then there was these conversations kisko yeah. ko pata hi nahi tha kya karna hai right yeah yeah I'm not going to comment on that mm-hmm. I think generally if we if we understand the inherent nature of a startup mm-hmm. what is a startup it's an experiment yeah you don't know it's going to work yeah. you're trying to make it work there could be a lot of things that you know they might have done wrong not predicted so on mm-hmm. and so forth there's a report that says you know a very significant chunk of startups actually 90% fail. of startups fail yeah wo to ek generally they fail uh-huh. but then a lot of them fail because of premature scaling to isliye us waqt unko zyada support bhi chahiye hoti hai jo ki ecosystem ko provide karni hai and so on and so forth right mm-hmm. I think the challenge I think it was more shocking for us because as an ecosystem we haven't seen this before. Yeah. We didn't see so much money coming in before and yeah. we didn't see somebody failing after yeah. getting so much money before. Yeah. So we were like oh my god ab to bas duniya khatam ho gayi. Yeah. But I think if 90% of the startups fail mm-hmm. and if 70% fail because of premature scaling yeah. it means they received funding and they tried to scale and they failed. Yeah. I think it's the inherent nature of the startup ecosystem. Mm-hmm. This is not to say that we shouldn't be more mindful. I think there were we did a lot of things wrong as uh, I mean yeah. and and we now see that a lot of that is like this is more of a correction happening. Yeah. So humne bilkul for example you know we were all only focused on scale and not product market fit. So yes we mm-hmm. did make mistakes and we're mm-hmm. learning from those mistakes but do I think that such news will stop coming out of the ecosystem no mm-hmm. i think it will we'll see more startups yeah. shut down and not just because abhi economy kharab hai ya abhi ye hai, but because of the very nature of a startup yeah um and so i think i mean yeah i mean i think my even if we say ke you know competent nahi the ya jo bhi tha we might 
everybody mm-hmm. make mistakes maybe we made some mistakes mm-hmm. um and that's okay we're learning from them mm-hmm. but i think that news is, does not mean that there aren't others who are still doing great work yeah um who are now and maybe we needed a little bit of this shock to kind of for course correction yeah so yeah i mean my my thought is that but i mean that's not technically it's mm. just yeah how things work but what do you feel like is that is that biggest lesson or takeaway from these cases especially the ones that have come up in the past week because there is something to be learned over here sure i think like i said it's more of a course correction i think hmm. startups will still fail despite of you trying to do everything right yeah. right there will still be businesses that fail even mm-hmm. businesses jo ke conventional businesses hote hain jo experimental nahi hote wo bhi fail hote hain yeah and there can be external reasons there can be internal reasons there can be mm-hmm. lots of things yeah i think one thing that everybody sort of uh probably in the startup ecosystem would agree on is one we need more preparation of okay we've raised funds but how do we use those funds to scale that's one i think it's also a matter of how many of us actually have prior experience scaling mm-hmm. a startup yeah right so a lot of people are just still learning i think so one is that is stage pay support bahut zyada chahiye whether it's from the government whether it's from the ecosystem support organizations mm-hmm. like i to i or other organizations the other obviously is what everybody is talking about is product market fit hone scale is baad ki baad burn kam kare be yeah. more careful about the money that you're spending don't over hire you know preempt things mm-hmm. properly and focus on product market fit and sustainability before you start thinking about mm-hmm. scaling yeah so i guess i mean for me we we all knew कि जब बहुत ज़्यादा पैसे आ रहे थे स्टार्टअप इको सिस्टम में वी ऑल न्यू आई थिंक फ्रॉम फ्रॉम एन इको सिस्टम स्टैंड पॉइंट दैट दिस बबल विल बर्स्ट एंड आई थिंक इन अ वे वी आर एट लीस्ट आई एम अ लिटिल रिलीव दैट इट हैपन सूनर रादर दैन लेटर बिकॉज द ब्लड बाथ माइट हैव बिन वर्स वर्स सो डू यू फील लाइक दिस द इन्वेस्टर सेंटिमेंट कैन गो बैक टू दोज गुड ओल्ड डेज लुक ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वॉज नॉट अ नॉर्मल ईयर so i don't consider that as like a normal that's a blip in the system yeah i mean but there was a lot of capital in the world some of it sort of came into sort of seeped into pakistan um i think investor confidence will recover mm-hmm. uh i think i mean vcs are risk takers mm-hmm. just i mean it's a very risky investment that they make but that's also the it's nature of this bet. business Absolutely. yeah it's a bet yeah right um so i think i mean will it will we see the same kind of money flowing into pakistan like we saw in 2020 maybe not mm-hmm. but we've been speaking to investors and while there are some i think in the longer term everybody agrees that you know they're going to invest in pakistan yeah in the short term they're like okay not now Mm-hmm. and you can understand why because of the political uncertainty bit yeah. and you know all of that mm-hmm. um so yeah i think investors the conversations that we're having with investors from a shorter term perspective we see mm-hmm. some pessimism mm-hmm. but when we think or talk to them in the longer term they're like They'll just give us like you know 12 months or 18 months assess the, and then yeah. yeah as soon as there's some stability mm-hmm. we're going to be back mm-hmm. so Yeah, I think investor confidence will bounce back for sure. And I also think that has to do like with a, a ch- it's not a matter of investing necessarily in Pakistan, but it's also it's a matter it's generally. is generally. Yes. Yeah, like we yeah. in general the world is in a very weird yeah. place right now, number one. <laughs> yeah. And in my opinion, I think that if anything this is kind of these times are leading us as operators mm-hmm. to be a little more mature and pragmatic about the decisions we take. Absolutely. Um The, and i think hum bahut zyada pakistan ki baat kar rahe hain but because hum pakistan mein rehte hain yeah. aur hame yahi ke problems nazar aa rahe hain hmm. but if you look at the data hmm. you'll see the same trend globally so it's yeah. not like baki you know duniya mein bahut sab pumping ho rahi hai sahi ho gaya hai aur yahan kuch galat ho gaya hai mm-hmm. yes there are additional challenges uh, that we face as a country mm-hmm. sure but um 
investments worldwide have dropped right in the startup ecosystem mm-hmm. and yeah. uske wohi inflation and you know yeah, all yeah, that yeah. i mean yeah uh, interest rates ye wo like there's mm-hmm. all a lot of macro mm-hmm. uh, factors involved and that correction is happening again globally yeah i think it's cyclical right ye hota hai fir sahi hota hai there's mm-hmm. always been like that mm-hmm. if you look at historical data also you'll see those ups and downs and it's a yeah. dip will come back mm-hmm. right true true so sana i have one last question for you mm-hmm. i don't want to take up too much of your time and i'm sorry if I was going in different directions with this one, but um, <laughs> if you could go back in time and meet your younger self, what would you say oh, to her? God, that's a very difficult question. I think I've done, I've lived most of my life on my terms, mm-hmm. so I don't know if I have a, the only advice I would probably have for my younger self is to maybe celebrate my victories more. Um. I felt like I never Don't look at me like took that. The time. Do you is that Sometimes we that? break the fourth wall as well, <laughs> so that's fine. I've never nobody said that. <laughs> nobody said that. Yes. So yeah, I think I never took the time to stop and think, okay, you know, I did something good and I should celebrate it. It was always okay, now ye kar liya ab now. This is the next thing. And maybe also अगर मैं पहले से अपनी कुछ लर्निंग इम्पार्ट कर सकूँ तो शायद वो ये भी होगा कि a lot of times the goals that i had set which i thought okay ye ho gaya zindagi mein to meri bas this is it life set but when i achieved it mm-hmm. i was like bas yahi tha <laughs> you know so that yeah. and i guess it it all boils back to sort of not celebrating my victories enough i guess but you think that was because of like you've just always been very ambitious and you're like what's next yeah i think it's it's that i think it's also i'm very very self critical so anything i do is never um enough mm-hmm. and i've been told that i don't give myself credit for things i've done like so for example like if i worked at an organization and i did something amazing and somebody will like you know how did you do that and i'm like you know koi bhi hota to yahi karta so i've been often when i particularly when i have these conversations with my husband he's like nahi koi bhi hota to wo ye nahi karta i was like nahi market achhi thi isliye sahi ho gaya and he's like so i guess maybe i would want to give more credit to myself and genuinely give credit rather than forcefully now that i like i know this is a problem yeah. i try and force myself to think ki ha nahi ab maine kiya hai to it's a good thing that i should yeah. accept that i did it but it's very, still very hard to accept ki acha ha maine kuch acha kiya hai so yeah. i think as a child that would be my advice to myself to, you know celebrate a little more and uh-huh. no i think that that's also very good for me to hear as well because i totally get it <laughs> so i it, yeah i'm more and more i'm realizing is that you know we're all uh, there's many people out there that are kind of facing the same issues fundamentally um and that's maybe a, a flaw of having so much ambition is that you forget to pause and maybe give yourself a pat on the back as well i think it's um it's also something that we working on at minerva these days is that life for ambitious people and leaders is a very lonely life yeah um and the more and more i speak to my friends now who are doing really well in their careers i realize that all of them think that they're not doing well yeah um and i think most of them are going for therapy including myself right mm-hmm. so i think um we're actually working on how can we make it a little less lonely because there's no manual that comes with a, with a leader right yeah. you don't you nobody teaches you you you're promoted to manager and then you're promoted to mm-hmm. director and you're promoted to ceo yeah but nobody teaches you how to be a ceo yeah and there are leadership programs and so on and so forth but mm-hmm. hardly anybody actually goes through that training mm-hmm. And so there's so much figuring out that you have to do on your own mm-hmm. without giving your team that sense of oh no I don't I have no clue what I'm doing yeah. right you can't let your team know that so mm-hmm. even though as an individual I'm very vulnerable when it comes to my team I'm very honest and transparent I yeah. still know that they want a certain level of assurance from me yeah which even I myself might not have and so who is there to give me that assurance and I feel like If you're a super ambitious person or if you're in a leading role mm-hmm. there is always that sense of loneliness that exhaustion that mm-hmm. 
who's going to tell you you are doing a great job yeah and if you are self critical which most ambitious people are mm-hmm. then technically you will always feel not enough yeah you hit a nerve with that one <laughs> um because i had uh, 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 do you know vladimir yeah so she came on the podcast as well and mm. we were talking about um founders well being yeah and there's something along the lines of that you know founders co-founders they have to talk to each other as well but i think that if this does work out then that's like that missing element yeah. um to it's kind of making that safe space yeah um but then also having that space that's kind of fueling you to keep going Absolutely. and not like it's a lot of workshopping right yeah. like there are problems that sometimes you cannot discuss with your team yeah right or there might be you don't know how do i solve this problem for my team member yeah yeah or how do i lead ye culture wala problem mm. hai who will you speak to and say you know there's this person mm-hmm. or there's this problem in my organization and some sometimes yes there are you know people there's always that thing ki acha aapke board of advisors ho ya aapke personal board of advisors ho and there's all of that yeah but then most for most people the only person that they go and speak to is either their spouse or their parents or their sibling and yeah. whatever and that's a, a lot of times the answers that you will get from them will be comforting but not necessarily rather than the right because they don't ha- they probably lack that context right yeah. they haven't been in that position mm-hmm. uh they probably don't understand and they'll try and sort of give you the salli ke nahi sab sahi ho jayega ha ha bilkul sahi keh rahe ho right even if you're making the worst decision of your life you become mm-hmm. best decision yeah. hai, right um so yeah i think that's a very common theme that has started to emerge the more mm-hmm. i've been speaking to my friends who are i mean from the outside you would think and i would think that they have like this is the success i want yeah but when you speak to them they're like the yeah, same yeah. in the game yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no and on that note sana thank very you sad. so much <laughs> very sad note <laughs> no not sad note i'd say uh, very hopeful actually because it's good to see that somebody's working on it hmm. you know someone like yourself who's already done this before yeah. you know you have the right mix and i hope that i can also like you know join the bandwagon as well because i'd lo- i'd love it honestly absolutely um thank you so much for your time thanks for having me i so hope you yeah, had a good I time i hope you i was able to answer a lot of times jab main baad mein apni conversations so i realized that i didn't answer the question i just said everything that i wanted to say but i hope I was no able no you to did you definitely did questions. you definitely did um thank you once again for your time thanks. and uh, thank you for all those watching and listening new episode next week see you guys there Bye bye.